Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1,475. Hey, in this video, we need to see how to swap this product code into this product code. Now, the pattern we're going to recognize in swapping from one to the other is that the 12 at the very end has to be at the beginning, and then the AFX has to be right after the 12. So we're going to reverse it, put it at the beginning, and then everything before the forward slash, we're going to reverse that and put it at the end. Now, we want to try and do this with three different methods, flash fill, formula, and power query. Hey, there's our flash fill button in the data ribbon tab. There's our Excel spreadsheet function formula. And there's our power query M code function formula. Let's go over to 1475. Now, flash fill formula power query, flash fill is great when it's a one-time event. We need to simply convert, and we're never going to need to have the solution update if the codes change. Formulas are awesome because the solution will automatically update when the source data changes. In fact, it will instantly update. Power Query is going to be the most complicated of all the solutions. But if we had the data coming from an external source or for some other reason it was in Power Query, we definitely want to see how to use Power Query to, in essence, clean our codes and create the proper new code. Now, here's the problem. Flash Fill should be the easiest solution, but it's not going to work. And I'm actually not sure why. Now, regardless of whether we use Flash Fill Formula or Power Query, we have to recognize the pattern. There's the description of the pattern. Let's try Flash Fill. Now, Flash Fill Data Ribbon Tab. There's the button. We simply give it an example of what we want, click the button, and it should automatically convert. So you ready? Here's our pattern. 12-AFX. So I took everything after the slash and reversed it. Then I need a slash. And then I need everything before. PSD-1 and Enter. Now watch this. You either come up and click Flash Fill, or you use the keyboard Control-E. And what? It didn't work. It looks like it's not seeing those three characters there. Now, I've actually tried this on a bunch of computers. I tried different versions, and I could not get it to work. So I, I'm confused. If anyone knows how to get Flash Fill to recognize, and I tried one example, two example, three example. I, I tried the ghost list. I tried everything. But I couldn't get it to work. All right, so I'm going to actually delete all that and just leave that as an epic fail for Flash Fill. Now, formulas. With formulas, we can simply take this pattern here and build it into our formula. All right, well, if we need the last two characters from the right, we're going to start our formula with the right function. The text, I simply click on the cell, relative cell reference, comma, number of characters. That's how many characters from the right. It's always going to be exactly two, so I simply type a two in. Close parentheses. Now I'm going to Control Enter and copy this down and come to the top, F2. Now what do we need? We need from the middle part of our text, it looks like if I'm counting on my fingers, the seventh position is the start position. And then I need three characters. First, I'm going to need a dash. So I'm going to use the ampersand, Shift 7. That's the join symbol. In double quotes, I type a dash. Any text in our formula is going to have to be in double quotes. Then I join it, and here we're going to use the mid function. The text, it's that relative cell reference, comma, start number. You count on your finger, so A is the seventh position, so I type a 7, comma. How many characters? Well, I always need 1, 2, 3, so I type a 3, close parentheses. By the way, the mid function, we've been using this for decades in Excel. When we get to Power Query, we're going to use text.middle. And that function will require that we put a 6 and then a 3. But for mid, it makes sense. Hey, that's the seventh position. I want three characters. Now I'm going to join it in double quotes, forward slash, and double quote. And we're going to join it. Now we need to use the mid again. So I use the mid function. There's the text, 
comma, the starting position, 1, 2, 3. So I type 3, comma, number of characters, 3, close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. So it looks like we got it. We just need one more thing. Notice I double clicked and send it down. The active cell is at the top. So I hit F2 to put it in edit mode. At the end, join symbol, and we need from the left, that text comma, and always just one character. Actually, if you leave off number of characters, it will assume you want one. So close parentheses. Now, I'm going to Control Enter, which will take the edited formula in the active cell and copy it through all of the highlighted cells. So Control and Enter. It looks like I forgot a dash, so F2 right before left, double quotes, dash, double quotes, and another ampersand. Now I can populate this edited formula down, Control and Enter. And there is our formula all the way down. All right, now Power Query. In order to get data from Excel into Power Query, you have to convert it to an Excel table. Go to Insert Table or Control-T. There's my table. I click OK or hit Enter. We immediately want to name it. So we go up to Table Tools, Design, Properties. There's the table name. I'm going to name this Start Code and Enter. Now that this is an Excel table, I can go up to the Data Ribbon tab from Table or Range. There's the name. I'm going to change the name. That's the name of the Excel table. I'm going to change this to something like Swap Power Query. Now, I don't really need this change type. It changed the type, so I use the red X. I want to add an extra column here. So I'll go up to Add Column, Custom Column. And I'm going to call this Swap PQ. That will be the same name as the actual query. Now we're going to simulate exactly what we did with Excel spreadsheet functions, but we're going to have to use Power Query M functions. Now we're going to start off not with write, but text dot end, open parentheses. Power Query functions are case sensitive, so you have to get the right capitalization and the right period. Now here's the code, so I'm going to double click that. That's actually like a relative cell reference here in Power Query comma, and two. Remember, that's like our right, close parentheses. And we can do the same thing we did in Excel. We can click OK and look at our result. And there it is. Now we can double click this gear over here and continue our code. We get to use ampersand, double quotes dash, and double quotes ampersand. And we don't use mid. We use text dot middle, open parentheses. We're going to get our code. And comma, unlike mid, we actually have to say how many characters in before the first character we want. So if we're counting on our fingers, we're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 is the forward slash. So text.middle needs the 6. Then you say comma, how many characters after that starting position, and we put 3. So that's different than the mid function in Excel. Close parentheses. We can click OK and just take a look. It's starting to emerge. Now I can come over and double click. Now we're going to use our ampersand, double quote, forward slash, and double quotes, and ampersand. We need another text dot middle, open parentheses. Now we need double click code, comma. And we're counting 1, 2. So I put a 2. That's the starting position. Everything after this that we want, we have to type a comma and say, give me the three characters after that starting position, too. Again, that's different than the mid in Excel. And then we ampersand, double quote dash, and double quotes, ampersand, and text dot start is our left function. There's the code, comma one, close parentheses. I think we got it right. Let's click OK. And there it is. We can add a data type if we'd like. Click the ABC123, and let's say text. Now we can go to Home, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. I want it as a table on the existing sheet. I'm going to click the Collapse button and try to put it in cell C16, Uncollapse, click OK. Now we forgot to get rid of the code column. No problem. 
Here's our Queries pane. If you don't see this, Data Ribbon tab, I'm using the latest updated version. So mine, Queries and Connection, is on the right of Power Query. Queries and Connection, if you have an earlier version, it will be, Get and Transform will be on the right, and it will say Show Queries. But we can simply double click to open this and edit it, and we're going to add a step. Right click Code, Remove. Now I click Close and Load button, and it automatically updates. So there we go. We had to convert a code into a code that is used for our system. We tried Flash Fill. It didn't work. We tried standard spreadsheet functions, and we even did Power Query. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. We'll see you next video.